Waved at that pitch. Swing and a miss. Swing and a miss. Swing and a miss. Swing and a miss. Says Machado, the swing and a miss. Swing and a miss. Ooh, that slider is looking awfully nice, awfully nice indeed. And luckily for you, I'm about to teach you how to throw that slider so you too can strike out every single hitter you face. But before we get into that, I do have to say that this video is sponsored by TrevorBauer.com, the official home of all Bauer Outage merchandise. So take a second, go on over there and get yourself some merch like this headband, scientifically proven to add at least three cool points every single time you wear it. And while you're at it, hit that subscribe button because it really helps the channel out. I'll give you a little bit to do that. Okay, so today we are talking about pitch design. Now pitch design is something that I've been doing since 2009 or 2010-ish. It's a concept that I introduced to the world back in 2013 in this video right here. So if you haven't watched that video, you can check it out. I'm gonna go over a lot of the same concepts, but I understand it a lot better now than I did back then. Uh, I also have much better film than I did back then. And I figured eight years later, it's probably time for a little bit of a refresh. So what is pitch design? Well, it's how to get the ball to move like you want it to move. Uh, and in order to understand how to do that, the first thing you have to understand is why a ball moves in the first place. So let's talk about that. Here on the screen, you can see a baseball that I have with some green axis lines, and that's just to make it easier to see what's going on. And if you put this uh, little graph up here in the top corner, if you're looking at that, if the ball moves in the top right portion of the graph that's highlighted in red here, that means the ball is going to have some lift to it and it's gonna have some movement to the right. Now it's not actually going to have lift because gravity is pushing it down, but we're gonna ignore gravity for a second and we're just gonna talk about the forces that the spin itself creates. So if you have uh, lift and movement to the right, it's gonna end up in the top right quadrant. If you have lift and movement to the left, it's gonna end up in the top left quadrant. That might be like a left-handed fastball. If you have drop, and movement to the left, it's gonna end up in the left-hand quadrant, and that's like a right-handed curveball maybe. And if you have drop and movement to the right, that's gonna end up in the bottom right-hand quadrant, and that might be like a lefty curveball. Okay, so now that we understand that, what if a ball is spinning like these arrows on the screen right here? Well, that's what we call gyro spin or bullet spin or football spin. Now, if you've ever thrown a football and you throw a perfect spiral, you know that the ball doesn't move right or left or anything like that. It just kind of goes straight. Now, gravity's gonna pull it down, of course, but it doesn't go left or right. If you've thrown a bad football, you know that thing kind of curves off to the left or curves off to the right if it's not in an exact spiral. So that's kind of what we're talking about. Similarly with a bullet, it spins around in a circle so it stays straight. So you can see in the movement plot up here in the top right corner, that this ball is going to move dead straight. It's not gonna rise or fall or move to the right or move to the left. It's gonna be dead center. So it's important to understand that gyro spin is going to produce no movement due to spin. And you can see in the top left corner here, I have back spin, front spin, side spin to the right, side spin to the left, and gyro spin. So the ball spinning like this is going to produce 100% gyroscopic spin. Now it's important to talk about the absolutes 100% gyroscopic spin, 100% backspin, or 100% side spin, because then we'll start mixing them and you'll, under, you'll have a framework to be able to fit in when we start mixing and understand it. So what if the ball is spinning like this? Well, this would mean the back of the ball is spinning up and the front of the ball is spinning down. Now, when you're talking about anything but gyro spin, it's important to understand that it's really the direction the front of the ball is spinning. So we would all know this pitch as a dead 12 to six curveball. The front of the ball is spinning from the top 12 to the bottom six. And you can see this is going to produce movement straight down, nothing to the right and nothing to the left, straight down. And you can see that in the top right corner here. And in our little bar graph in the top left, you can see it's going to be 100% front spin. Similarly, if this is spinning dead to the side, you can see the dot move over there uh, to the right. Now, it's a little bit tricky to understand this. The back of the ball is spinning towards the left, which means the front of the ball is spinning towards the right. And if the front of the ball is spinning directly towards the right, you're gonna get 100% side spin towards the right, and the ball is going to move to the right. Now, if we go a step further, now this ball is spinning with 100% backspin. You can see the red dot move. You're gonna get 100% movement upwards, no movement right or left, but 
a lot of the movement or all the movement directly upwards fighting gravity and you're gonna end up with 100% backspin. And if we go one more step, this ball is spinning 100% towards the left. So it's going to move all the way towards the left. The front of the ball is going towards the left. All the movement will be in that direction. So let's mix these together. What happens if the ball is spinning like this? Well, you have a little bit of top spin because the front of the ball is spinning downward a little bit and you have a little bit of side spin towards the left. And so you can see the red dot on the movement plot is going to move a little bit down and a little bit to the left. And you can see that on the bar charts here, we're gonna get about 50% spin downward in front spin and about 50% spin to the side to the left. What if the ball is spinning kind of like this? Well, now you're, not, you're gonna have some backspin and you're going to have a little bit of side spin towards the right. So no longer are you going to have front spin and side spin to the left. Those bars are actually gonna go to backspin and side spin to the right. And you can see where the red dot is. You're gonna get some lift and you're gonna get some movement over towards the right-handed side. This might be like a, a right-handed fastball. Okay, so let's talk about the slider. First off, the grip, how do I hold it? Well, it's basically a two seam grip, all right? I'm holding the ball directly on these two seams, uh, pointer and middle finger, and then I'm tucking this thumb underneath, right on the horseshoe, right like that, okay? So the way I go about getting this in my glove in the first place is I find this seam right there with my thumb, I grab that seam with the thumb, get the thumb comfortable, and then I just lay these fingers on the ball like that, and it just fits nicely in my hand. Now you can see these fingers here are not tensioned down like they were on the curveball. okay? They're not all the way up, of course, but I find the seam with that thumb right there, put these two fingers on the ball like this, and then these just kind of hang out in a comfortable position. Now you can just take this ball right out of my hand, all right, and uh, that's on purpose. I like to hold the ball loose for a couple different reasons, and We'll talk about that in a little bit, but let's talk about the keys. Shut up, phone. Let's talk about the keys to throwing this pitch. I need to turn my phone off. Wow, not prepared. Anyway, uh, keys to throwing this pitch. So we're gonna have a loose grip. Like I said, that's the first thing. Now you wanna have a karate chopping motion with your hand. Now, same thing, anytime you're throwing a breaking pitch, you wanna have this wrist locked. You don't want it to bend this way and you don't want it to bend that way at all. You want it to be locked in right there in a neutral position, locked in right there in a neutral position. So I have loose grip and I have this karate chopping position with my wrist. Now the next key that I wanna do is I want to push the side of the ball forward, okay? And that's gonna get the ball to spin to the side like this. So I want to basically push this part of the ball forward. On the curve ball, I was trying to pull down pull the front of the ball down like this. On the slider, I want to push, my hand's kind of like this when I throw it, it's kind of out to the side. So I want to push the side of the ball right here forward like this. I'm not trying to pull it straight down like this. I'm not trying to snap my wrist. I'm not trying to get underneath the ball or supinate it or anything like that. I'm trying to push the side of the ball forward and you can see how that puts kind of side spin now it would be in this position here, so you can see how it puts kind of side spin on the ball when I push the side of the ball forward, okay? And the last thing that I'm thinking about is I'm trying to drive my pointer finger directly to the plate. I'm almost thinking like I'm going to point this thing to the plate. Now for those of you who've seen my gangster curveball video, you know that you start with a uh, kind of the gun position like this and then you wanna turn that over like this, and that's kinda of how you get the gangster curveball. ball. Right? Same type of thing on the slider, except instead of pulling down in the front of the ball and pointing the finger like this, you're going to take the pointer finger and you're going to point it like this. Okay, now you can see you're still pronating, still pronating the forearm, but you're gonna take that pointer finger and you're gonna point it straight to your target. And what that's gonna ensure that happens is that that pointer finger is going to be the last one to leave the ball. The thumb is going to slip, the ball rolls into the fingertips. The fingertips go forward, the middle finger comes off the ball, and that pointer finger is going to press the side of the ball forward 
as it's turning over, okay? Just like that. So those are the four keys to actually throwing this pitch. It's loose grip, stiff wrist, uh, get on the side of the ball, you're going to press the side of the ball forward and the pointer finger is going to be the last thing that touches the ball, okay? Why do we have a loose grip? Well, if you have tension on the ball, the more tension that's on the ball, the longer it's going to stay in your hand. That makes sense, right? If you have too much tension on the ball, the ball's just never gonna come out of your hand. We gotta get the ball to come out of our hand, so we need the right amount of tension. On the curve ball, it has to stay in my hand long enough, while my hand's coming like this, it has to stay in my hand long enough that my middle finger can get to the front of the ball to impart the spin. So there needs to be a good amount of tension. If that curveball comes out of my hand back here, it's just gonna pop up and it's gonna be a very bad pitch. But on the slider, I'm not trying to get to the front of the ball. If I get to the front of the ball, that's gonna pull the axis down and it's gonna make it more of a gyroscopic axis. So I'm trying to get on the side of the ball, which means the ball has to slip out of my hand earlier because as my hand's coming through, it needs to be in this position, not that position when I release it. So if I hold onto the ball and my hand gets to this position, it makes the movement of the pitch worse. So I need the ball to come out of my hand a little bit earlier. So looking at it from the side, if I'm in this position, I can press the side of the ball forward because my hand's moving in that plane. But if the ball comes out of my hand here, I'm no longer pressing the side of the ball forward, I'm pulling the side of the ball down, okay? So I gotta get the ball to come out of my hand when my hand is in a vertical position so that I can then press the side of the ball forward with the pointer finger, like that, all right? And that's why I have a loose grip. When I, was when I was originally developing this pitch, I had a lot of tension on the ball because I wanted to spin it very fast, and that's a misconception. With pitches that you're not getting completely on the side of the ball, such as the curve ball and the slider, more tension usually increases the spin rate. But on pitches like the curve ball and the slider where you're right on the side of the ball, any force is gonna produce a lot of spin because it's all going to spinning the ball and not as much to pressing straight through the ball and creating linear, uh, linear force. Um, I keep wanting to say momentum, but that's the wrong term. If you press through the center of the ball, you get linear force. If you press through the side of the ball, you get rotational force. So any little bit of force on the side of the ball is going to spin the ball. So I don't worry about getting tension on it because I need it to come out of my hand at the right time. So for me, loose grip is important and that is why I tuck my thumb underneath here. If I hold onto the ball like this, where my thumb kind of like grabs the ball here, then I have too much tension on the ball and it won't come out of my hand in time. But if I tuck my thumb all the way underneath, the ball comes out way too early. So I needed something that I could keep the ball in my hand with just the right amount. And I found that if I hook that seam with my thumb, just like this, not like this, but like this, it'll stay in my hand long enough and then the seam will just slip right up there. It's pretty easy that it slips right there. And then the ball is out of my hand and my fingers can press it forward. And you can actually see that if you look at the screen here, when the thumb slips off of the ball, then it's in my fingertips. You can see that my fingertips are pressing straight forward towards the target and that my pointer finger is the last thing to leave the ball, okay? So I'm gonna play this clip through just so you can see it come out of my hand in real time and you see how it spins. Let's talk about why it moves the way it moves. Well, first off, how is it gonna move? As, as you saw in the clips to begin this video, it's gonna have a lot of movement towards the left, towards my glove side. It's gonna have a little bit of downward movement and it's gonna have quite a bit of gyroscopic action, okay? If we look at this from the pitcher's view, you can see where the axis is coming through the ball. Now there's the red dot on the screen uh, and that kind of signifies the back part of the ball. So it might look like this axis is going from five to 11, but it's really pointing kind of through the baseball. All right. And you can see that this is going to have a little bit of side spin towards the left. Remember it's the direction that the front of the ball is spinning. So this ball is going to be spinning. The front of it is going to be spinning towards the left. So it's gonna have some side spin to the left. Now 100% side spin to the left would be with this red line at 12 to six. So this doesn't have 100% side spin to the left, but it has quite a bit of side spin to the left. You can also see it's gonna have a little bit of front spin. 
Now dead front spin would be going from 12 to six. So that purple line would be going from 12 to six, but it's not, it's going from two to eight. So it's gonna have a little bit of front spin, but not a ton. So it's gonna have a little bit of depth. It's gonna have quite a bit of movement to the left, side spin to the left, takes it to the left. And it's gonna have a good amount of gyroscopic action, which is gonna limit the overall movement that it can get. So that's what it looks like from the pitcher's view. Let's take a look at it from the side. Okay, now this ball is traveling towards the plate and you can see that the front of the ball, the nose of the ball is actually tilted up quite significantly. Uh, it looks like it's about 45 degrees upward tilt. Now, this means that it's going to have quite a bit of side spin to the left. Now, if you were looking at it from this direction and the red line was completely vertical, that would have 100% side spin to the left. It's obviously not, but it's quite significant. If you remember on the cutter, that front of the, no the nose of the ball, the front part of the axis, the one closest to the plate, was very much in line with the green line. It wasn't tilted up nearly as much, so it didn't have as much side spin to the left and it didn't have as much movement towards the left. Okay, let's take a look at this from the top view. And now you can see how the axis is not dead gyroscopic. If it was, this red line would be pointing straight towards the plate. Instead, it shifted over towards the left-handed batter's box a little bit, which means that this is definitely going to have some front spin and you can kind of see that now 100% front spin that red line would be vertical and the purple arrow would be pointing straight towards the plate so it definitely has a little bit of front spin but not a whole lot and you can see where the red dot is on the screen that, that kind of illustrates the upward tilt of this axis okay it's not pointing straight towards the plate it's tilted up a little bit and it's tilted towards the left all of this to say that you're going to get quite a bit of movement to the left a little bit of movement down, and there's a good amount of gyroscopic action, which is going to limit the total movement that you get on the pitch. Okay, so now you know why it spins the way it spins, because of how I grip it and how I throw it. You know why the spin creates the movement that it creates and how the spin creates the movement that it creates. So how do you actually go about using this pitch? Well, let's check that out. So here's the pitch, the slider, that ends up down and away to a righty and it's followed up by a fastball that ends up perfectly up and in to a righty. Now, if you overlay these, you can see coming out of the hand, they look almost identical. All right, now the slider actually starts off a little bit to the right and a little bit higher than the fastball. So to the hitter's eye, he's going to see a fastball that is up and in. That's the trajectory he's going to see. Now the fastball ends up perfectly up and in. It actually hits the red dot of the target and the slider almost hits the red dot of the target down and away. It ends up slightly above the red dot. So this is a strike on the black away with a slider and a fastball up at the top of the zone on the black for a strike. Now this can be used as a tunnel pitch for strikes. Uh, the other way that you can use this is as, as a freeze pitch, right? And those are really the two main ways you use it. You can throw the slider for a strike and tunnel it off that high fastball. You can move the fastball down in the zone a little bit and throw the slider as a tunnel pitch out of the zone to get chase, but you're still using the same concept as uh, of tunneling. You can also use it as a freeze. So let's check out what it looks like as a freeze pitch. Here is the same fastball overlaid with a slider that ends up down and basically middle of the zone, but it could also, you know, the, the effect would be more pronounced if it ended up a little bit more to the right, thinking a backdoor slider to a lefty, down and away to a lefty, or down and in to a righty. So let's look at what that looks like coming out of the hand. And you can see the slider immediately starts off more to the right than the fastball. Now, if you track the fastball all the way to the plate, this is gonna hit the red dot, and it starts off about the middle of the zone. So when a hitter sees that pitch, if he sees something start middle, he thinks it's a fastball that's gonna run in so he can open up to hit it. But this fastball hits the inner black. So anything that starts closer to the hitter than that might run in and hit him. So if he reads this as a fastball, he's gonna read that I need to get out of the way of that pitch, it's gonna hit me, or 
don't swing. Similarly for a lefty, he might read this as a fastball that's gonna run off the plate away from him and shut down his swing. And then the slider that starts more to the right of the fastball will actually come back and land in the strike zone. So you can use this as a front hip freeze to a righty. You can also use this as a backdoor freeze to a lefty. And those are the two primary ways that you can actually go about using this pitch as a tunnel pitch with the fastball or a freeze pitch uh, off of the fastball. Something that looks like a strike and ends up as a ball for chase, something that looks like a ball and ends up as a strike for take. Okay, now the last note that I wanna make on this pitch is if you get it right, it's an outlier pitch, all right? It means it moves more, it moves differently than the vast majority of other pitches out there. The vast majority of sliders don't have this much sweep to them. So you can actually get away with throwing this in the zone. You don't have to be perfect with it. You don't have to throw it on the black or just off the black. You like just try to center it up in the middle of the zone. You're gonna miss a little bit because it moves so much but it's gonna be really hard to hit regardless. So you wanna get this as close to the zone as often as possible because you wanna generate a swing. The last thing you want the hitters to do is sit there and say, I'm just not gonna swing at that pitch at all because I can't hit it. And then you have to throw it for a strike. You wanna throw it for a strike often enough that they have to swing at it because they know you'll throw it for a strike. And then you can get them to chase outside of the zone or you get really bad contact because they just can't hit the pitch. That's how I use it. And I imagine if you're throwing it, that's probably how you should use it if you nail the spin axis correctly. So that is the slider. Hopefully you learned something in watching that. It's one of the best pitches in my arsenal. It's one of my favorite ones to throw, specifically to righties. And I hope that it becomes one of your favorite ones to throw. I taught you how to throw it in a safe manner, the safest manner possible, so that you're not gonna put yourself at injury risk. Remember, stiff wrist, don't deviate this way and don't deviate like this. Lock that thing in press the side of the ball forward as you're pronating, turn that pointer finger over, you're gonna protect your elbow, you're gonna throw a nasty pitch, I hope. And if you have any examples of it, if you learned something from, if you learned something from this video and you wanna send me some clips of you throwing this pitch, I would love to see them. So send those my way, find me on a social and send them my way. And without further ado, that's all that I have for you in this video. Hopefully you learned something and I'll see you guys in the next one.